Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Erica Wall, and I am the director of the Berkshire Cultural Resource Center here at the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. And I am not going to mince my words. I'm really excited about this evening. So I'm so thrilled that we have two powerhouse artists here, and they're going to be really modest, I'm sure, and not say that that, oh, okay. They're both beyond. And I am just beyond to have them here. So first and foremost, I want to welcome Deidre Brackens. I am so pleased to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. And of course, Genevieve Gaynard, our inaugural artist in residence here at MCLA. And we have been doing these series of discussions since Genevieve arrived and we're getting close to the end of our time together. She will finish and culminate her residency here in August with an exhibition. Um, but we have had such a neat opportunity to come together each week and have these conversations. And so again, I am so excited and so pleased to have Diedrich here with us and to have a conversation between these two artists um, who have a, a very interesting relationship uh, and connection in so many ways. And that's what we wanted to explore tonight. But first I wanted to um, ask you Diedrich, if you would, for those of us that aren't as familiar with your practice and your work, if we didn't know anything about it. Uh, would you just describe for us a little bit about what you do? Uh, sure. Uh, I am a weaver. I make large-scale uh, figurative textiles and abstractions using the loom. Great, great. And the, um, the, the focus of your work, I think there are a lot of um, there are a lot of parallels between the focus that Genevieve has in your work dealing with um, identity, social narrative, your use of allegory, to talk about um, just the, the so many different so many different things. Um, now, <clears throat> within the African American community, uh, that relationship in terms of identity as it is related to our history, um, I think obviously it always has been, but is especially, especially timely right now in terms of looking at wrongful, uh, wrongful death, um, injustice, inequity, and all those things. I'm, I'm particularly curious why and how you um, started to work within textiles and weaving in particular. How did you find your way there? Um, I um, found my way to textiles by accident, kind of. Like I stumbled into it. Um, I went to undergrad knowing I would study art. Um, did not know what fiber or textiles was when I arrived there, but uh, thankfully my second semester, a professor um, just saw me making sculptures of fabric and string and was like, oh, you should take a fiber class. Um, and at the time I was like, no idea what that is. Um, but I took a weaving class that summer at her suggestion and fell in love with, with it immediately. The process, um, just manipulating the, the machinery. Um, I think there's something romantic about just the way the loom itself looks. Um, it just always looks out of place when you encounter it, not having seen such a thing before. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Um, you know, as we, we find with all of these discussions that um, 90 minutes is never close to enough to get through all that we want to talk about. Um, I, I think between Genevieve and Gaynard, Genevieve Gaynard and Diedrich Brackens, I could spend this whole 60 minutes going down the list in their CV of exhibitions and successes and awards. Um, but I am- Oh wait, <laughs> joking. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Always, always. This but, is how I show out. See, you, <laughs> usually I'm the one who will digress, but we'll leave it to Genevieve this evening. <laughs> I, um, but we, we most like to hear from you and provide an opportunity for all of the folks in uh, this community here to ask you questions and interact. Um, clearly, you, between the two of you, I'm sure, amidst this uh, sheltering at home, you've probably gone to more Zoom 
discussions than you have cared to and talked about your work um, quite a bit. And I, I, we decided that we wanted to give you a break on that tonight. Um, we have given much information about um, Diedrich's work, Genevieve's work, and so we're gonna let everybody explore that on our own and use this time to actually talk with you about um, particularly one of the things that we're most interested in in this series is to address how we can create more transparency um, within the art world for those that aspire to do, uh, to, to basically uh, pursue what you have pursued to achieve something similar to or understand how to navigate their way through that with the understanding that everyone will navigate it differently. Um, so the transparency part of it. The second is to create um, inspiration by showing exemplars like yourselves to people who also aspire to do this, but also wonder what it takes to to achieve these sorts of sorts of things, but also to understand that um, we often don't see what we're able to achieve. And there are those who have done many great things and sometimes we just need proof of concept, which is not always readily available to us to understand that you're able to do that too. So that's why we invite you here. And lastly, it's to create connection. I think again, which is exceptionally critical at this particular time when we are so distant uh, physically and sometimes um, I feel obviously socially from each other and to sustain some form of community within the art world, but beyond that. And so again, I welcome you Diedrich to our community and, and I appreciate you sharing in the conversation. So connections are really important to us. So I'm gonna ask you lots of different questions tonight, specifically about relationships because you and Genevieve share relationships as artists, as friends, as roommates, studio mates, and colleagues. And that I guess is more of a professional sort of uh, identity for your relationship and we wanted to talk about those things because as important as it is to understand and see and deconstruct artists work I think we can learn a lot about their practice by learning a little bit about them so hopefully you'll indulge me and um, answer answer questions but in terms of connection I wanted to start out I will start out I don't know if I'll be quite as um, vulnerable as I may ask you to be, but I would like to say that I am one of your 900 plus Facebook friends. So we kind of have a little bit of history, but I, some of your, some of your last posts really, uh, I had a connection to them, two in particular. One was you had mentioned that you had purchased a new mattress before going, before this pandemic hit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No idea. But I would like to say that I too am a stomach sleeper. And let me tell you folks, it's not healthy, it's bad for your back, and it was a really good idea for him to do that. And I just wanted to say, I don't feel quite as alone as I thought. It is okay to sleep on your stomach, but Diedrich went beyond and made sure that he made the healthy choice. So I re that really resonated with me. The second is you had said that you had recently discovered the film Coco, that in 2017, Pixar film animated, I watch a lot of animated films. I have children. And you said that you cried. And can I tell you, just the thought of Coco makes me cry. When he- I know, I'm sitting here like, oh no. I know. <laughs> Miguel starts singing to his grandmother, tears swelling, that song. I was gonna play it while everybody was getting together, but I couldn't do it. I get <laughs> Love that film, everybody should see it. Put it on the list. So I, I feel like we have a bit of a, just a slight connection. So I wanted to share that with you. So in terms of art, we will probably hear a little bit about uh, Genevieve and Diedrich's practice if they reference that. But tonight we're gonna talk about relationships. And I'm gonna start out with the simple, you both are LA based. Diedrich, you're originally from Texas, but you are both now LA based. So there's a common, Greg, you both came, you were transplants into Los Angeles, which I guess is, is fairly common for all of us. But um, tell me how that happened and how did you meet? Do I need to call out names? Okay. I, I'll do it First. if you don't want to. <laughs> I'm like, I've been talking. No one's here for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I met Genevieve. Genevieve was one of the first artists I met when I moved here in 2015. Um, so, 
our one of our mutual friends, uh, Danielle Jackson, she uh, is a friend from grad school, a curator in, in New York. And she's like, oh, you need to meet Genevieve. She just moved here. And, and Danielle also like always knows things, but like, I'm never sure how. And so she's like, yeah, she just moved here. You should meet her. And I was like, oh, okay. And then we never like set anything up, but like she said it. And then the next day we ran into Genevieve like five times. Like at a certain point it was like, okay, we're clearly like on the same like gallery track. Um, but we'd be like, hi. <laughs> um, and then other friends of mine um, were connected to Genevieve through her first gallery. Um, so I would see her at her openings or at the openings for other folks at the gallery. Um, so she was already sort of like in my larger network. Um, and then one day I saw her at her gallery and I was like, hey, I'm looking for a roommate. I found this like great place. Um, there's like studio, there's all these things on site. And she was like, did someone put you up to this? And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> I just like you're connected I figured you would know someone and she's like no 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 I'm actually looking so um in 2017 we became studio mates and roommates um yeah we've That's been cool. like hanging since then <laughs> <laughs> what Diedrich what made you decide to relocate to Los Angeles over like New York or somewhere else um I moved to LA originally for a teaching position at Cal State Long Beach. So I'd been okay. living in Oregon, teaching a visiting job in textiles, and then knew um, that I was going to return to LA or to um, California at some point. And so LA seemed like a good, a good fit. Okay. Yeah. No shade to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Props to Oregon. Jenny, do you have anything to add to that? I don't remember that story at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty much how it went. I think you were like, do you know anything who might, anyone who might be looking for a place? And I was just like, nothing comes to mind is how I remember it. And then everyone at the gallery was like, actually, you need a place. Because I was like couch surfing, so. <laughs> Aha. And so... You know, you, you brought up this, you just kind of saw each other on the circuit going through galleries and um, what would you, how would you describe, because clearly it seems um, that it wasn't a mistake, uh, what would you say when you, when you would start to, to talk and kind of got closer, what was the connection, the main connection, was it um, just, you know, personality or was there something about maybe the, the focus of your work that just really brought you together or was there anything in particular? I feel like I always remember, like, before we really knew each other, we would just see each other, and it was like, oh, good, another Black person's here. <laughs> we, like, kind of, like, clustered together. Because <laughs> we would, like, end up at some spaces, and then we'd be like, we don't know anyone here, you know? Um, so that was always, I mean, I was like, okay, any reason to hang out with you? Cool. <laughs> strengthen, strengthen numbers, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so when you when you both share a studio and you live together um so how did you well obviously it sounds like you found you found a place and then asked the other one to join so it wasn't so much about where are we going to live and what are we going to so it already been been determined you had found something yeah so, yeah <laughs> <laughs> when you got into your space as Two people who I'm sure are both um, focus on aesthetics and visuals. How was that settling in? Was it just like, you take this half and I'll take that half and you put your stuff and you put, or how was it like this, you know, coming together and creating your space? Is it pretty oh, interesting? This is, or is it clear? This is perfect That's Deidre's. because I'm like currently sitting on one of Genevieve's 60 couches. <laughs> <laughs> um, when oh, we first moved in, I was like, oh, I have. I have things, but I'm like in this weird place of like maybe getting rid of things. And Genevieve was like, this, these were not her words verbatim, but basically Gene Genevieve has enough things to decorate like six houses. <laughs> so she was kind of like, oh, like, I mean, I have some stuff. Like, 
you know, like, you don't have to worry about it. Cause I was like, I think I'm getting rid of my couch. Literally. I was like, I think I'm getting rid of my couch, but I'm not sure what to do. And Genevieve is like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but like in the first six months of living together, she would be like, so the couch in the living room is in a show. So it's going to be gone, but I have another couch. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that one in the living room. And then she'd be like, but also that couch is back now. So now maybe we can like put both of these couches in the living room. So like our decor was like ebbing and flowing for a while. <laughs> um, but like, never looks as cool as one of the installations, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's the, the decor is a lot of, of like, this <laughs> but i'll i zoom from here often and people like the first thing that several people will say is oh my god i had that exact couch growing up <laughs> so, like, it's probably yours bingo <laughs> bingo it works so is it um how how is it when you are like sharing these spaces does is everything pretty integrated like you talk about you know when you're in the studio you're like it's just about the studio or is everything kind of just work all together between the two of you and, and in the spaces are they kind of so close that everything is integrated and was that intentional well when we first moved in our income wasn't as you know solid and so we were splitting uh, part of the space. And we thought that someone else might rent the space that wasn't being used, but that never happened. Um, so we were really kind of on top of each other at first. And again, my installations are encroaching on his space often. And I was like, I was feeling bad, but I was like, I don't have to pay your part of the rent, do I? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, it ended up like flipping around that we had a little bit more of a divide between the two spaces, but I do remember um, fondly, which I act like it still happens, but I'll be like, so I'll trade you this doily for this doily, like, cause he was working, I don't know, some of his works had crocheted doilies in them and I, and I happened to use those in my installations and even in my collage work. So those were like fun moments where I was like, oh yeah, I'll give you that one if you give me this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it sounds like it does um, kind of go into another. So somebody has a question here and says, how big is the space? So the workspace, I think. 1,300 square feet. 1,300 square okay. feet. Yes. Um, and so my next, my next thought is, is you know, of course, we're all envisioning what it looks like, how you work. So when you, um, when you are in the space, is it the sort of thing where, you know, you walk over to each other's spaces like, hey, what are you working on? What you doing? Or is it kind of like, you know, I got my space, you, you keep it, is it, is it like a quiet space? Um, and you kind of keep to, to your own work. And is your, is your, are your schedules really kind of off? Not necessarily the same, maybe mm -hmm. different from how it was when you first started. Um, I would say it ebbs and flows like we generally we're kind of like door open between coming in to see what each other is working on um, but then there there are definitely times where it's like Genevieve it's like I have a deadline and I'm like I eat sleep and work or vice versa but you know there are there are times where it's like just making sure you're okay but I'm gonna like <laughs> stay out of your <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective though I'll be like working really hard on something and then he might be working really hard on something and he kind of knows the inventory of my space somehow and he's like oh you have a shape or something I'm trying to like trace and he'll come in and I'm like oh maybe he'll see what I'm working on and like say something and I'm like oh he didn't like it it's not good <laughs> 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 but there's a lot of uh, dialogue up here yeah I think that isn't really happening in real life, but <laughs> <laughs> it's alive and well in, in Genevieve's head. That's a great segue because my next question was, 
yeah, do you give each other, you know, are you each other's critics? Do you say, hey, Deidre, come over here and take a look at this, or hey, Genevieve, what do you think of, of this? Is that like an ongoing thing, or is that kind of just sporadic based on what you're working on? I think, I don't know, you want to go? I, we both have an answer, I know, but like, <laughs> I think that, um, like we both know each other's strengths. So we pull each other over for that thing. Do you know? Um, so I'm like super nitpicky about something like fine tuned things. And he might just ask me to come over to see if I notice it. Okay. And it might not affect what he does, but he just, I think he just gauges like, is someone else gonna notice this? Cause if you notice it, then most people probably won't, but. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and I like to have like a conversation like if I'm like laying images out for a collage I really bounce my ideas off of him like what is how does this translate and um, or he'll come in and be like oh but you had something else there and I'm like oh I didn't even know you noticed so like I'll maybe I'll bring that back you know those are some of the things I can think of yeah I think we talk a lot about like if I come over there, we talk a lot about titles or like what the what the collage is doing, for instance, like messaging conceptually. Um, and then like Jennifer, I tease her because she'll have like everything laid out. I'm like, God, that's beautiful. And she's like, you know, this isn't glued down. I'm going to change this 60 more times. And I'm like, no, no, like this is good. Or, or particularly like I know how she likes to lay out uh, like I know what her impulses are about like approaching the image and like how to build it. And so sometimes I'm like, you've done that. What if you did it more like you did that one that I really loved um, instead of like, this isn't working. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, I guess one of the things, um, so when you're, cause it sounds like, it's more, and I wonder if the, the feedback process has evolved since you first started living together. Was it, did you give each other more advice, you know, um, critique, feedback at the, be, you know, when you first moved in and as you have become busier, you've done more things, is it, is it different? Um, is it less? Is it, you know, because um, as you're describing it, it's more like, you know, this is pretty close to done or I'm just at the beginning. I'll see you when I'm, you know, <laughs> age. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like you were gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like we, what I would say we've given each other the most of throughout our time together is support. Like more than talking about the work, I think we're like, do you wanna go get that food that's terrible <laughs> at midnight? <laughs> shout out to canters <laughs> <laughs> then we are or like you know we're like let's get our friends together to go do this thing or let's take some time to like go to oh, i was gonna name the place uh oh, what do you them? call the place where you get things like uh where i get stuff oh the, yeah. like the antique spot yes i don't know why i couldn't think of that all right, like she's like, let's go to the antique store or or like I will say, let's go. And she's like, well, I have things to pick up anyways. Um, like I think sometimes for us it is spending time with each other to get away from the work, like mm -hmm. because everything's so integrated, we, mm -hmm. we can serve the purpose of studio, but we really like offer that respite, I think. Or we'll talk to each other through the wall and like the door will be open, but we can, there's not like, we can have a conversation and um my like most recent fond moment was like listening to luther vandross live at radio city music hall and just like diedrich makes noises i don't know if that i don't know how <laughs> to say it so, like i can just like know like what's going on or not and be like is something wrong um based on the sounds but um it was just like we were both working on our project but at the same time like really acting like we were live at the concert <laughs> and like showing out 
<laughs> See, that's what we really want to hear about. That's, that's basically. Yeah. I mean, we're like two old people, honestly. No offense to if that's not supposed to be offensive. Um, <laughs> old souls. <laughs> we're old souls trapped in these young bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you know, like, so we kind of, I don't know, I feel like sometimes people maybe think that we're something we're oh, not. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, he's mm. bored, basically, but sometimes I think people hype it up and we're like, really, we're just kind of at home, sitting yeah. on people's <laughs> couches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So kind of like what people think when they see that amazing photo that you showed for this that we posted. Loved those, loved those outfits. Um, yeah. but people, but I, I think that has a lot to do with the romantic idea that folks have about the art world in general, you know, that's made up by certain, um, you know, headlines or things that we focus on. When you, when you think back, you know, you talked about like a moment, is there any, is there a moment for either of you when you felt like the other gave you feedback that was, you know, amazing. Like it just totally shifted something for you or was so, so valuable for you, either for a particular work or part of your practice or anything like, like that, like the best advice that Diedrich had given you or Genevieve had given you or, or some sort of feedback. I'll let you go first. I was like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it. No, uh, <laughs> I'm, I feel like we're, con at least for me, and I think with my practice, I need more dialogue in terms of like the message where with Diedrich's, like his practice, like, the, you can't see the thing like the bigger picture until he's like, I walk out of my bedroom and the living room is like all the pieces that he's woven and he's like putting it together. And I'm like, oh, whoa, that's the bigger image, you know? So mm. that's when I kind of get all, you know, just like excited for it. Where with mine, it's, and I guess I'm referencing with the, uh, the collage works specifically, it's like there's physical, visible puzzle pieces that can be kind of played with. So the conversation that can happen is different for my work versus his work. And I feel like he has all these sketches, like he kind of has a different plan process. Although, you know, things happen throughout it that can be altered or changed. Um, for different reasons, but yeah, I don't know if that, is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for me, it's like, I think Genevieve has expanded my field of vision, like just in general, like we'll be going somewhere, like we'll be parked in front of like a shop with like big glass and she'll say, your headlights out. And I'm like, I would never have been looking in that glass to see my headlight out or, or like even studio things she'll show me images of her own and she'll say like oh which one do you like better and I'm like sweating because I'm like these are the same images <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be like no like you know I changed this we tuned this up I'm gonna fix that and I'm like oh and I think like she looks so intensely at things that mm -hmm. like the way that she looks at things when she comes to my studio and the questions she asks about that kind of like wider array, like now, like I think it's more integrated in my mind to think about mm -hmm. those things, like all the way through the process. Um, and like, it, because sometimes we're at a distance, like I send her a photograph of the work to get her feedback and she's like, she'll call me and be like, this is a terrible photograph. Like you need to- Oh, I'm like, oh. It. The photograph of the thing is terrible, not the thing itself. Yes, yes, <laughs> truly, uh, yes. But like, uh, I think <laughs> her sort of field of vision is so much, like it makes me consider things that I think I was not thinking about right. before. Right. Um, and some of my early sketches, like I work from photographs and I think 
listening to her, I'm like able to make better sort of preliminary decisions um, that I oh, was not thinking about before. <laughs> 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 I love that. <laughs> um, and I guess I would say, like, similarly, like, because I think there's more looseness to your practice that I realize, like, when I have to, like, lighten up and, and, like, make a move where I'm like, I know I would typically want to do this, but now I know that maybe I should just kind of chill, like, sometimes most of the time more is more but sometimes i have to pull back <laughs> it seems like you've both benefited benefited from this like cumulative sort of over time just understanding and then putting it together as it as it evolves through uh your practice in different projects which is which is which is an amazing thing it, i think that is in and of itself a, a means of of support for each other. Uh, somebody had a question um, asking how, when you, as you describe that dynamic, how has that changed since you've been so far apart? So Cedric's still in Los Angeles and Genevieve is here on the East Coast. Are you still able to kind of exchange or, or talk as often or, or is this the first time you've seen each other in the past room? I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, it is this, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think I was excited. We talked yesterday. It was yesterday or the day before? Yeah, it was yesterday. And we, I was like, not aware at first that she was like calling me. Cause like normally we FaceTime audio or FaceTime because she's like in the woods and the connection is terrible. And I was like, oh my God, we can talk more <laughs> because I can hear you. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I think sometimes when we're just like, on the move, we're not in lockdown. Like it's not unusual for us to be apart for a couple months at a time, but but like we'll talk. Um, yeah, I think this is probably the longest that we've like really been out of each other's like space. Yeah. yeah. Um, Doesn't want me to come back. He's like getting used to the house to himself. <laughs> His couches yeah, are gonna be moved point. around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I haven't touched anything. She'll know. <laughs> Those eyes. <laughs> um, so, so you know, we talked a little bit about you as as artists uh, working together, uh, living together. So clearly, you are you are your friends, and um, you know, being friends and also sharing the same, I guess, line of work or pursuing the same thing. And, but the thing that I'm, I'm thinking about now as I, was, as I was thinking about the question that I was gonna ask you is, your work takes you away from each other a lot. So it's not, I think at certain times you're probably kind of passing each other or spending a little bit of time with each other. It's not as though you're with one another as often. But if you were, and if you have been, I'm sure at some time, you know, at some points you get on one another's nerves. Um, and there are things that might bother you about the other person. And I'm just curious, is there anything like that that possibly be nice tonight? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> I will say, of course, I will I mean, of course. Like I mean we we fight, we love each other, we 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 like spend time away from each other, like even in the same town. Um, but I think we do a good job and have learned to do a good job of like, like negotiating that stuff. Yeah. We're both in therapy. <laughs> 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 we've got like, I think we've got good like balance and some ways to like figure out our things. Um, but I will say as it comes, as it relates to the art, like I feel like Genevieve's like my biggest, one of my biggest like forms of support and like cheers for me. And we've traveled to see each other's shows. Like, um, yeah, I feel like like the artist that I want to show up for the most is Genevieve and it, it feels good to do so and, and like support her in whatever ways I can. Like it, it it's like, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know you were gonna say that. That's not what we talked about. 
<laughs> oh, this was all staged? You had this all staged? Oh. No. We're, gonna, we're just going to shut this down. I was like, this is why people, like, I go to, I've gone to a few of Diedrich's talks, and I'm just like, it's almost like I don't know the person that shows up to do the talks. I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's just like, got it locked in where I'm like, the person trying to remember words, like how I've been all of these meetings. Um, I mean, I didn't know antique store of all things. What? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> got you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's been, it's nice to have that person because I think a lot of times we, you know, we not only supporting each other, we have a lot of close friends that are artists and we're kind of always showing up for everyone as best we can. And it's just nice having someone to, you know, we enjoy, you know, asking each other like, so what are we going to wear to this? And it might not be this, you know, same thing or just like, it's just fun to plan with someone that, you know, I, and there's times that we've been really late because I still have to paint my eyebrows on or because I stupidly said like, is that really the belt you want to wear with those? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I didn't mean for it to like spiral into like, okay, we're not going for another hour, but um, sometimes <laughs> it's that. But it's just nice to have that person. And I know like I'm working on the show for, for MCLA right now. And um, as my, my kind of mode of working is like more pressure, better results. <laughs> um, and so I know I'm going to be reaching out to Diedrich and texting, like that kind of chain is going to start to come up and just warning you. Um, so, um, you know, like we, we make a point to check in, like if we haven't heard from the other person and we've learned, like he said, like the things that, you know, we need to like work on or just like we have our couch meetings. <laughs> um, when, when you think about kind of your, your, I guess the idea of what you thought it would be like, we've talked at, at great length with Genevieve about, you know, her, her reasons for moving to LA, what do you, what did you think it was going to be like, all those sorts of things. And then you think about where you are now with the both of you together. Um, you know, I guess maybe I'll ask Diedrich first is, is how you imagine living in Los Angeles. Is this, is this how it was going to be for you? Did you have it? Did you have an idea of how, you know, and, and we've talked, very, you know, specifically about setting up, you know, setting up your studio, where you're going to live and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it sounds like it worked out beautifully for the two of you, but did you have anxiety around that? Was that, you know, is, is how did, how is it now in compare, in comparison to what you thought it was going to be or how it was going to work out? Erica. <laughs> um, oh yeah, we get real, Deidre. We really do. <laughs> For the sake of, of helping those that go in doe-eyed and think, wow, how is it going to be, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think some of the biggest realizations for me in the last few months, and just like, not specific to quarantine, but I think quarantine has really heightened it, is that um, I, I think that for me, art is not life. And I, I think that the romance around building a career as an artist is that all of these things are sort of perfectly integrated and that you sort of like it, it sort of feeds all of your things and one of the things I've been trying to remind myself is like um, art is not my relationships with my friends with my family um, and I can't like use it to fill in the loneliness of not having a partner <laughs> uh, like I think that there's all these mm -hmm. levels mm -hmm. what would you say I said, it's working for me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, we've had these conversations. We probably had one last night. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in preparation like, for the, yeah. Being stuck in the house, like, like I am so acutely aware how, how much scaffolding I've, I've like put onto art. Like everything that I 
don't have right now, I was sort of using art as the vehicle to like make up for it. And I think that now I'm like, I don't, what do you do when you don't want to go to the studio? Like, <laughs> what do you do when you can't go to an opening or a museum? Um, and, and so I think I'm re, like I'm learning how to sort of navigate those things. Um, and when I first came to LA, I was employed full-time as a professor. So I think there were certain parts of my life as a, a professor as an artist and as a, a person that were all sort of um, tricky to negotiate. Um, and I think I got to, to a place where I started trying to decouple those things more. Mm -hmm. And now I'm kind of like, yeah, like being an artist, being in the studio is my job. Um, going out into the art world, there is a persona. Like I think as Genevieve was saying earlier, like the people we are, when we are in the public eye are not necessarily the same people we are at home um which i think is like a testament to our to our friendship like we really like purely enjoy each other's company um and like i think there are times where we're just like when is this over so we can go like be weird <laughs> yeah. um yeah yeah yeah, I can appreciate that. I And I will say, you know, Genevieve and I had a conversation not too long ago about one of the things that I've always been most, you, you illuminated it beautifully, is the idea of the understanding that it is, it can be so encompassing because it is, it is for all intents and purposes, you. You mm -hmm. is all of this. And then there's a certain point where you're able to engage support, um, by others because you're in a position to actually compensate people to help you to do that. But before that, it is just you, but ultimately everything comes from your creativity. And I and we wonder how people divide up an artist's day. It's not like going yeah. to nine to five and it is not structured in the same way. And I don't think that everyone fully appreciates how, um, how challenging that can be to, to divide literally yeah. those spaces for you, um, and I think that, that you put it beautifully, but that is, it is, um, it is the nature of the beast to some extent, you know? And I think that the other thing that I did not expect and gained in LA was um, a community. Like I, I do think so many of my like cherished friendships are with folks who are, who exist in this ecosystem. And I think one of the good things for me has been watching like watching all the people I love like do well and achieve things and get accolades deservedly so um and that it, it was not I don't think there was any gamesmanship to it for for me and I think I could say the same for Genevieve like we are friends with these people who who are like getting to watch succeed and it's like oh I think there's this weirdness of sometimes being like talking to some stranger and they bring up someone's art and I'm like, yeah, you know, so-and-so is like, is like in my heart, like, <laughs> um, and to have these like really intense personal relationships with, with these folks. And I think when I first got to LA, it wasn't exactly, it didn't feel like it was that way. Like, I think it has happened since we've been here and I, I can't say what, what all the contributing factors are to that, but it's exciting to like, to be two like points in like a, a bigger sort of constellation of people. Yeah. Can I, I wanna, I wanna, I've, I've been trying to figure out how to phrase this question in a way that gets to the idea that within, within this, within the art world, and I think specifically for artists, as you have shared with us that, Artists are each other's, um, they are each other's collectors. <laughs> they are each other's, uh, you know, support. They provide each other with so much and you're all on the same path. And as you evolve in your career, different things will happen. And you talked about that, the enjoyment of <clears throat> seeing other success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yours may not have come yet and things go. And how do you, you are so close. You can see each other as that I'm sure I, I mean, even if I were just to, to put on a timeline, 
you know, what's happened probably since the time that you both um, moved in together and have been, you know, doing your practice in LA, lots of different things have happened to you. Both of you have experienced much success, however you define that. I think within the art world, we would definitely say that that is the case. For as you as, as individuals, and even not even between you and Genevieve, but I think just generally speaking, it must be somewhat uh, challenging sometimes when you see your counterparts. You know, it's like one gets something and you haven't, but then you get something. And, and you know, this kind of, you don't want to make the other feel bad because, you know, everybody's working so hard. And so you want to, you know what I mean? Is that, is that ever, and it doesn't, you don't have to share that between the two of you, but I know that it must happen within your group of friends. And how do, how do each of you navigate that? I mean, there have to be, maybe you, you two come home and be like, did you, did you see, oh my gosh, I feel, you know, how did that, how do you go through that? Because as artists, everyone goes through it. I'm just curious if you can in some way share with us how that must feel and how you navigate that. Uh, I think that there's definitely times when, whether it's voice, like we're both kind of go at, like hoping for the same thing. Um, and then one gets it, meaning Diedrich and I don't. <laughs> 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 and I think I'm more, I don't know if it's like the Yale mentality or whatever, like that competitive thing where I'm like, this is a person I love and I want them to succeed in all of the ways. And so I, that's something I have to like constantly like check myself on. And I might, you know, I guess I mostly deal with it with like jokes and sarcasm and just like say the thing. And then I like go back to celebrating the win, you know, for whoever got it. I don't know. Um. I think for me, it is more, well, actually, I have to call you about some, some, one, something just like this, now that you mention it, um, and I was thinking this the other day, like, typically, I feel like I, I don't think I ever expected to be here. Like, I don't think I ever thought that this was a life that I would be living. Like, I knew I was going to make art. Um, I hope that I would get it into shows. And, and I think that there's something about making weavings in particular that I was just like, that's, that's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> um, and so I think I'm always like grateful for what happens. I feel good about the things. And I think genuinely like where my attention usually is, is like, is this thing good? Do I think I did my best work? And I, it takes so long to make one thing that I'm so head down in the studio that like when an accolade comes, I think I'm like, yay. Like I feel good about them, um, but I don't think, I think by the nature of our career, like a lot of the like big awards or fancy things, you just can't predict. So I'm not usually like, oh, someone got this. I should have got it. Um, Was that one time? No, there, there are certain yeah. things where I'm like, I don't understand. <laughs> Why, then? <laughs> why this thing is being praised. Not necessarily, I don't understand why I didn't get that thing. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. But there's also sometimes like... But we talk, we do talk shit. Like, I don't want to act like we're like holier than that. I do feel like we're like, did you see what happened? <laughs> like, we, I, we, we, like, there are things I feel that we both are like on about. Um, right. And there's also sometimes where I think we don't want to, we, we don't want the other, it's almost like we don't want to like brag about it. And it's not even like, that's what we're trying to do. We might not even right. mention it because mm -hmm. we're like, and then all of a sudden there'll be a post and I'll be like, how come you never told me you did that? Or he'll be like, oh, a uh, uh, film crew's coming. <laughs> I, I hate this impression. <laughs> 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 But, yeah, but I would say, like, to this idea of transparency that you're talking about, I feel like we've entered a specific sort of space where we are privy to things that we would not have known about five years ago. And I do think that there is, like, gamesmanship or, like, political decision-making that happens. And I, and I would say that those are places where I might feel, like, the, like, rub or friction of, like, 
this is icky or like that's mm -hmm. terrible or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that person didn't deserve that thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. or or like i think with our peers like trying to share like steer clear of this thing this place this entity this institution this person um like i do think yeah. that there are real like criticisms that we try to like level about things too um mm -hmm. beyond just like i don't like that person <laughs> yeah yeah um no, I, I think I think that that again, um, maybe even understanding, uh, you know, and I, I I keep using this this word broadly, like navigate. I think you know there are things that you navigate, but there are things that each of us navigates differently because there's a system in place or or politics involved, and and I think um, that's also something too to keep in mind. But also too, um, it I think I guess in in so many. It's amazing though how small the community is too that you realize. So everything may seem when we when when we read about it or we you probably you and Genevieve maybe have a different connection to folks that you know or have, you know. So I, I'm sure it's it's different in that way, that way too that um, we may not necessarily understand or appreciate or relate to in the same um, in the same way. The um, the idea of I guess kind of leading to that, um, the idea of being, we talked about you being artists, studio mates, uh, but you know, as this idea of colleagues, you know, on a professional level that there are, and I think that maybe is kind of getting more to, um, for, for the two of you in terms of your relationship, um, have you found that as your careers have evolved, that idea of colleagues is, and I think you, you kind of alluded to this a minute ago, Diedrich, that you help, you help your colleagues or your or other artists within this world to understand or to, um, to kind of to help them, but it's professionally. It's not just about uh, critiquing their work or, um, but you know, how, you know, hey y'all, how we, uh, this is how we navigate this or, you know, you should understand or those sorts of conversations that maybe were not part of the dialogue that you had when you first started your careers. Do you find that, you know, and it may just be based on, um, on your experience. Somebody had a great question, I think, that kind of leads into this. Um, what have been your biggest growing pains professionally for um, for each for each other of them over the past three years, you know, I'm sure a lot has happened for you both, and there's there are experiences and accomplishments and um, you know things that may not have worked out the way that you thought, but I'm sure you've learned from those. And how do you help each other as colleagues? I guess more professionally in that light, or is there not really a distinction? Maybe even two. That was a really long question. I apologize. I mean, there kind of is a, a distinction. Like we know when we're in work mode. I'm just like kind of remembering. Like if we know like one of us is on the phone with a gallery or something, then we know we're going to like we're in a certain mode. If that like we're constantly switching like the the roommate and the kind of colleague vibe or whatever like our galleries don't in cross over necessarily like we don't mm -hmm. have the same representation so um it's it's nice to have each other as sounding boards for things that we might not have known and this is like kind of our earlier days living together um and i think maybe not even in a clear way like through conversation just picking up like what someone's going through um whether it's transitioning to a new gallery or um just like kind of learning what you can ask for from the galleries in terms of like i mean i don't know if that's too specific but um those types of things i think are things that come to mind mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I think fees, like navigating money for things, what, like that you should be paid for certain things. Um, 
I think that there was some like extremely beautiful modeling done by Genevieve earlier like in when we first started living together I don't remember exactly when but like I was photographed for something they sent a photographer it was done and she was like why didn't you ask for a photographer and I was like why would I do that and she's like because but like why wouldn't you why wouldn't you and I was just like I wasn't even thinking about this and she's like well yeah that's like money that could have went to a black photographer or at least like the photographer of your choice mm -hmm. and I was just like wow like yeah which seems at the time seems so small but I think in the conversations we've been having now I'm like oh like now I am able to tell people and share that information and I think everyone's been going through these reckonings where they realize like where and when they can push and like what 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 are these like real material changes you can make um and so for me it was like after she told me that it was like something I always insisted on and I, I I think whether or not it's happened has been a different thing but it has like allowed me to have like a lot of complex more productive conversations with people who approach me to work with me and they also understand like I come with a very particular set of values that flow from the work that I do like it's not mm -hmm. um it's not just kind of like a tapestry on the wall, like these things are all sort of um, built in like a larger universe. Um, and I, I think the other thing that I've learned from my colleague um, is how to work a room. Like, like I would just go to the opening, be there, mind my business and like talk to my friends and get out. And I think beyond sort of like speaking to people more, like I think there are a lot of situations in sort of an art environment where you're like dealing with people who want something from you. And I think Genevieve sort of expertly navigates engaging, but like disengaging <laughs> when they're, when those moments come up. Um, and I think in the beginning, I was just like a deer in the headlights, like what is going on here? Um, I still rescue you a few times. <laughs> I am being vulnerable now. <laughs> and we appreciate that. This is a safe space. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I think that that is something I, I'm always, I'm always concerned about too, in terms of, and it sounds like that. I think a lot of it is from experience that is acquired over the course of your career. Uh, that teach you, but I think yes, your colleagues are the ones that are helping that help you to identify those moments. And you're absolutely correct. Genevieve Gainyard knows how to work a room. There are at least five ne like heads nodding <laughs> when you said that. Um, and so, I I wonder um, is there is there something when you think about each other. Um, and, and maybe, maybe you just said it with Genevieve, but um, when you think of, of the other person, uh, what is it that, that you, most, um, you most admire? Like, you know, hands down, this person to me, when you think about your relationship, that unequivocally, Diedrich is blank, Genevieve is, blank um, in terms of admire let's not get negative folks let's keep it up <laughs> never would do that I know <laughs> it I know it I think it's not a Diedrich is blank but and I think that it's evolved and gotten stronger there's two things but his his openness to be vulnerable, whether it's in our relationship or in his work more specifically, has drastically pushed, I think, over the years to such a strong place that, I mean, it's continuing, I'm sure. Um, but also, and because he's so poetic, his answer is going to be like way better anyway but like that part of him just like I mean his the tone of his voice is very 
and like <laughs> radio, but he just has the words. He's extremely poetic. He has the best titles. And I don't know, he's just the best. Deidre Perkins is the my, best. Um, thank you. Um, I think my things, both like for me and for other people, like the way, like there are times where I'm like, Genevieve is not paying attention. Like not even, it, it could be in any sort of set of circumstances and not even directed to like what I'm saying, but I'm like, Genevieve is not paying attention. And then later she will say like, oh, I went and drove here to get this thing or like order this thing for so and so because like I know they're having a tough time from like what they were talking about yesterday and I'm just like oh, she's just so awful and like there have been times where she's like hey hey I like got you this thing and like we're gonna go do this and like just spend the day with you because I know like something's going on or or just like because like I've gotten so many just because gifts from Genevieve. And at first it would like make me anxious because I'd be like, why is she giving me things? <laughs> that now I'm like. When did she um, get to give me something? No. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, if I haven't seen her in a while, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get some things. And like, when I see her, or, like, it, like if I think of her, I'm just going to get it. And then like, when I see her, I'm like, I got you this thing. I got you that thing. Sometimes she doesn't like them, which is fine. <laughs> oh, sometimes I don't know how cool it is, and he has to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think she's like, I guess it's that field of vision thing again, like where she, the way she sees the world and then like responds, it's always super thoughtful and genuine. Um, and, and when I think about the work, I remember like flying to New Orleans to see her prospect show and being like, wow, like this woman is amazing. And I feel like it has only like grown from there over the years. But for me, I feel like a lot of the kernels of like installation and like immersive, when when I think people say installation, it, it could be like a mound of things in the middle of the room. But for Genevieve, it is like, you kind of fall into her world. Um, and it's just amazing to see like where it is, where it has gone and is going. See, pure poetry. <laughs> I agree. I, agree. Um, I, I want to make sure that we give uh, folks enough time to ask questions. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, questions, actually, um, and of course, I, I, it will take us back to your artwork, and that's, that's perfectly okay. I think we talked a lot about relationships, um, not that we're done. But we have a question from Nan. And can we unmute Nan? It's it's a beautiful question. I would I would prefer that you ask it, um, and it, it's actually quite involved. So Veronica, shall you unmute her, please? Nan, do you want to wave? Maybe Veronica can find you. If she might be searching for you right now, there she is. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Nan. Hi. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi Genevieve. Hi Deirdre. I'm a fan of both of your work and um, my question, I'm just going to read it from the chat. Um, in, in some of your work, I feel like you, that you both have such different approaches to the representation of the black body. Um, and I wondered if you could talk about how you might influence each other or impact each other around that um, and any shifts that might have taken place um, over time while you've been working, you know, um, adjacent to each other. That's a good question. Now I'm just like trying to think it through. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at you, Deidre, because I'm thinking about like, and you can stop me if I'm going totally in the direction, but like, um, I think early on there was hesitation in the sense of like wanting to be 
put in a box in terms of what is expected from your weavings, I think, in terms of like the figurative stuff. Mm -hmm. But when that question comes up, I'm like thinking how we both kind of become, and if I think about like my photography versus your, um, your weavings, like how we were both kind of creating these portraits of ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's not really what she's asking, but it's something that I'm sort of like noticing that we would never, we've never talked about. Yeah. Or like thought out to do. I do think in some ways, like you, like the portraits of you have receded in a way that like when we were first living together, I was really sort of still in that like abstract world. And now it is, it is mostly me i would i guess um and i think you are doing a lot of like bringing a collection of images together to triangulate like the black body or a black experience um right like that it, that is literally collaging a bunch of different sort of source images together to kind of like complicate that mm -hmm. um and i think for me it is it like relies more on color in like an, a form um, that is consistent. I don't know if we even answer. I don't that. know either. I mean, I feel like this is something we've thought about and around, but never like this directly. But I think it's a great question. This when we introduced that we're doing a, we have a two person show we put together. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> put it out in the universe. <laughs> Thanks, Nan, for your question. I did answer it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had a question, a question earlier on that I'm going to go back to so that we don't pass. Um, Sam, Sam, will you, Sam, you had a question. You wait, raise your hand. We can unmute you. You had a question about um, Yale photography. Sam, do you see him, Veronica? There we go. Hi, Sam. How are you? Um, thank you all for doing this. This is great. Um, this is a question. I'm trying to monopolize my my questions by ask, you know by asking multiple questions and what as one question. So this is a this is um, for Genevieve. Um, what was your experience like going to Yale? You know, particularly um, you know as an African American woman um, going there. You know, in that department, in the art department, and also did you study with Crutzen? Um, what was that experience like? And then finally, what prompted your interest in using your own body as subject matter? Um, I'm like spinning with all those. Okay, so a lot in there, yes, so. I studied under Grudson and I think his like his influence is sometimes um, seen in my work, kind of a cinematic um vibe but it was at Yale where I was really kind of decided to like or decided that I could speak to my black experience so um being a biracial woman a woman of color and seeing all of these other students making work about their black experience and just kind of through conversations and just being interested in their stories and wanting to kind of, I don't know, um, kind of be in dialogue with those voices as well. It just kind of seemed to make sense to put myself into the photographs. It's kind of like, I often say like me working through through my shit. So I don't really want to put someone else in there because I don't, I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm in the picture. Um, and so that's kind of evolved, but the language behind it has evolved into me kind of knowing how I navigate through the world as this kind of question mark. And then when I put that facade on for the different characters, that kind of shows the viewer how we all navigate and how we kind of put people in boxes. And it kind of is a tool to break that, if you will, or at least just have conversations about how we can break that. Does that work? Great. <laughs> um, 
thank you for your question. Um, I will definitely ask another one, but I, I'm, I'm gonna, I will definitely, I definitely invite folks to, to ask questions, either just raise your hand, put it in chat, uh, send um, a message to Veronica or myself, and we'll definitely unmute you and, and convey the questions to our two, to our two artists. Hi, Joy. I want to answer to my question, Genevieve, that I asked you <laughs> off camera. What? Oh, bring that up. About like what, what thing, what three things like make a, a deeds weaves. <laughs> hmm. I have my answer for yours already, which I told you, but I'll share with the, <laughs> the audience. Do you share, Genevieve? Well, I know he's been thinking about this one, and I was just like, I don't know. You're always... <laughs> Keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, here, okay, so I'm just going to pretend. Like, I'm going to accept that I'm not poetic. Um, so, <laughs> the something that all of your work has is that what you're saying like like if i feel like there are times for artists where it's like i don't know what to do so i'm gonna put these things in or like if you were in a space and you saw it you'd be like oh that's definitely a, a genevieve <laughs> ganyard <laughs> of which for you it was like roses rhinestones drips i feel like the rhinestones are new but they're gonna come back <laughs> And yours would be a basket. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> some sort of animal. <laughs> 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 and like something off kilter, which would, <laughs> which would annoy me, but it works perfectly for you. <laughs> 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 but that's like I feel like what we were talking about earlier when you have a collage it's a little like not symmetrical I'm like you're shaking the table or the Genevieve table at least <laughs> yes that's not like good thing I didn't glue anything down here in the studio again. <laughs> <laughs> that's true I could attest to that um, we have a question from Maggie Maggie where are you Raise your hand, Maggie, or show yourself. Oh, actually, I take that back. Maggie just can't wait to see the show and wants to thank both of you. <laughs> <laughs> the two-person show? That, that's, yes. <laughs> okay. that's right. She can't wait to see that. So, great. Um, you know, I, I wonder when, when you are, um, so let's say you, you read an article, you know, you read an article about uh, one, uh, one another in something, Genevieve had said, sometimes you'll read something and you're like, I didn't know that that was happening or whatever. Do you ever think when you read something in there that it is, you said, like, they do not know who this person is, or I wish they knew, why would they say that? I wish they knew that Genevieve was, this or that is not Diedrich at all or that you know do you ever is there something that you wish and I don't know how else to phrase it except for the public that the public knew or that people who see your art knew about the other person um, that they don't that they don't know uh, and I and again I mean this in a in a positive way you yeah. know that oh I wish they knew that that Diedrich did this or was like this. Is there anything or can you ever think of a time when somebody describes something and maybe didn't know that you, I, I'm sure most, most folks know that you know each other, but oh wow, if they only knew. I mean, I feel like we're pretty honest in the inner, I mean, if, if it's like an interview, I mean, sometimes we say stuff and it gets slightly altered. I do remember Diedrich being like, you know, your Wikipedia page says you're younger than you are, or something like that. <laughs> I was like, damn you. <laughs> I think it said you were older than you were. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Older than you act. 
That's funny. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that maybe there were frustrations early on about just like wanting to have better writing, like wanting to have our work be contextualized in different ways than it was. And I think those are things we talk through a lot, but I guess maybe that goes back to being colleagues where now I think we've gotten a little bit more smart about how we how we choose to be sort of profiled or interviewed or like what we say yes and no to, um, mm -hmm. like what we share about ourselves so that it's not like regurgita regurgitated a million right. times. Um, right. Yeah, m more so. And I'll like, I don't know if you do this because you kind of are more poetic, but like I'll kind of ask for the questions in advance. And I learned like, that from you. <laughs> I learned that from Aaron. <laughs> um, but that kind of like sitting down and realizing like sometimes people ask questions and they just think you can kind of rattle it off but it's like no this has to because it's going to be on the internet out in the world forever being like said like that and you you want to be able to really take your time with it answer it genuinely and you know, explain it without all the ums. I have a lot of ums in mind, so so that it, it gets to the point, you're not wasting the reader's time and you're getting to the point of the work, you know? But I often will say to Diedrich, you know, either can you read this or how do you think I should answer this? Like, like there's a back and forth that we can have, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Do you, do you feel that, um, and I, this might be an obvious question, but you know, you, you've talked a lot about just this kind of a little bit in terms of understanding that there is, um, there is a strategy to this in terms of creating, you know, uh, a space in which you feel comfortable that people understand, as you had said, Dietrich, your values, all that sort of stuff. Does that become, d does that, is that just part of it for you now, or does it ever feel kind of heavy or, or weighty as you go through this and also continue your practice and, you know, kind of look at bigger picture as you move forward? Does it, does it seem just like this is just part of it, or does it ever weigh heavy on you when you think about advancing or moving forward? Yes. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, I think that there are times where it's, um, it feels daunting. I think some of the things that make it feel possible are, are having this like beautiful community that we've built around ourselves. Um, yeah, and I, th I think that we, I think we definitely have these times where we like have to go do a thing or, you know, whether that's, uh, going to do something with the gallery or going to uh, the studio at a terrible hour or you know any number of these things where you know we look at each other and we're just like oh like <laughs> um, but, but I guess that this goes back to me for me to the fact that it is work like it, as romantic as it is as, as much as I love it um, as much as I do I probably do it more than I should um, I have to remind myself that like there's so many things outside of that that feed me and that like keep me going um, and that make it sort of worth it or sort of provide the kind of space away from it. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, I got nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally that is not true. <laughs> I, need, I need a hobby. That's what I need. It doesn't involve buying shoes. <laughs> Sorry about that's for the shoes. post discussion. <laughs> There's a lot of shoes. That would be one of Diedrich's pet peeves. He's like, I did this next pair of shoes. <laughs> I'm looking at like. <laughs> There's so many shoes. You can two dozen right now. Blow <laughs> up away, and I would not know. <laughs> uh oh, I think she's giving you an out, Diedrich. She's she's. Oh subconsciously giving you a hint. <clears throat> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> How's the laundry situation? What's happening with the laundry? I don't know. You're like a piler. 
Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at a pile of laundry as well. <laughs> the pile of shoes. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I think um, I had written down a question asking, you know, how do you feel that this relationship has, uh, you know, helped you in terms of, you know, navigating the art world, your art careers and everything that you've described. It has, you have helped each other from the very beginning. I don't really believe in mistakes. It's very clear uh, that you were definitely meant to be, um, to be colleagues, friends, artists, studio mates, roomies. Um, and that, you know, I think that it's a perfect example of what we talked about in terms of, um, you know, what is essential is community. It's connection. It's being able to see past all of the outside pressures and expectations that either we place on ourselves or others place on us and having those that can help us uh, see through and navigate. And it looks as though it is working. I won't say the past, it's, it is working beautifully for both of you. Um, I, I'm gonna ask folks if they have any other um, questions that they, that they want to share with us. Um, but I am going to say that, you know, I think we could easily, as always, carry on this conversation for much longer, but I think, I, I feel like we've learned a lot and um, I wanna thank, both of you, and I want to thank you, Dietrich, for, for being so generous and so honest uh, and indulging us in this conversation. Uh, it has been, it's been a pleasure, and um, at one point, we probably will just focus. We'd love to have a conversation about your, your artwork as well, but we really, truly, um, I think all of us, and there are lots of different thank yous on this chat list that, that have appreciated you sharing all of these wonderful experiences, stories, and insights with us. So thank you very much. Of course, yeah. I do right there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in next week for the... <laughs> That's right. There is always a sequel in Coco 2. I'm waiting. Okay. <laughs> With tissue in hand. Um, but uh, yeah, I, again, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. All of the people who joined us for the first time, I hope that you will come back again. Again, thank you so much, Diedrich. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, all of the folks that um, help us make this possible and that come each week. And um, most importantly, I hope everybody is well and stays safe. Genevieve Gagnard, music, please. I had something lined up. <laughs> See, this happens all the time. It was, it was perfectly timed. Sorry, wait for it. A little bit louder. That's good. That was good. <laughs> that was perfect. Beautiful selection. I'm gonna get him in the studio. Everyone, this will be archived. We will have it up for everyone to experience if you didn't get a chance. Again, you all be safe. Thank you.